The night beat starts right now. Scattered, scattered metal and debris from a fiery crash on Highway 281 this morning has pretty much been removed. That doesn't mean the work for repair crews is done, though. You can see traffic now moving in the northbound lanes of Highway 281 at the quarry here, but those southbound lanes where much of this debris was, that cleanup effort still very much underway and traffic shut down in those southbound lanes still at this hour tonight. TxDOT now has the job of ensuring the highway is safe for drivers. Yeah, the night team's Devin Clark explains the lengthy and the pricey process ahead. It's a major thoroughway, you know, uh, 281. So obviously, uh, as soon as this happened, we knew we had a, a big case in our hands. An 18-wheeler that TxDOT says crashed into a column that holds up an overhead sign bridge resulted in huge flames, smoke clouds, and debris scattered all over 281 near Hildebrand. It, the truck skidded along the highway and crashed into the column itself, compromising the integrity of it. Signaling the beginning of a major project for TxDOT. But they've been able to assess that the damage is uh, bad enough where they're going to have to bring it down and replace it. 281 was closed off in both directions between the downtown area and the quarry as crews work to carefully take down the overhead sign bridge and damage supporting columns. And obviously, we, you know, the most important thing for us is the safety of the commuters. For TxDOT, repair work is far from over. It's putting out an emergency bid to find a contractor to replace the damaged column and overhead sign bridge. It could take weeks or even up to a couple of months, you know, but I mean, traffic will still be able to go sure. through. Yeah, that, that was Devin Clark reporting the price tag for this project roughly between one and two hundred thousand dollars. And once they begin, the repairs expected to take place during the nighttime. And here's what we know about what led up to this fiery mess today. Around 1130 this morning, an 18 wheeler driver lost control, hit the median and crashed into two light poles. Slick roads appear to be a factor in that. The contents of the truck burst into flames, spreading to both the north and southbound lanes, causing that traffic nightmare, shutting down the highway for much of the day. But even though the fire was massive, no one here was injured. That includes the driver, who was saved by other drivers who witnessed the whole thing. I see them go up to the car or the, the truck, then they go back to their vehicle and then they go back to the truck and they're just, I can hear them breaking the window and I watch them pull this guy with a green shirt out. Because of them, that man is alive. We want to give you a few other views of traffic along Highway 281 right now. This is the Trans Guide camera at 281 in St. Mary's. You can see that northbound traffic on 281 is flowing, but you don't see any cars headed southbound. That's because, again, those southbound lanes remained closed tonight. This is a view here at 281 at the quarry, where we saw much of the action today with that fiery wreck happening right near the Hildebrand exit. Again, traffic flowing northbound tonight, but those southbound lanes along Highway 281 still remain closed. We'll continue to monitor that situation. It was a deadly fire that changed the San Antonio Fire Department forever. The Ingram Square fire took the life of firefighter Scott Deem. Firefighter Brad Phipps severely burned and continues to recover. Tonight, a closer look at a new federal report we first told you about on the News at 5. San Antonio Fire Chief Charles Hood says although those findings weren't surprising, he's promising to continue to make improvements to keep all of his firefighters alive. Unfortunately, sometimes for change, you have to have a significant emotional event. That emotional event, May 18th, 2017, the night firefighter Scott Deem died. Heavy smoke and flames filled the shopping strip. Investigators have said the fire was deliberately set and started inside the Spartan Box Gym. The National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, NIOSH, conducted the latest review on the fire department. It's called the Firefighter Fatality Investigation and Prevention Study. Fire Chief Charles Hood says the department wanted to be a part of this review. It reads as a uh, educational document, so we thought that was really important so we could share what we learned with this tragic incident. Chief Hood says there were seven contributing factors to the deadly fire, including no sprinklers, strong wind gusts, zero visibility, freelancing tactics. These findings similar to what the state fire marshal's office released in its report in February. 
NIOSH also examined the department's equipment. Our boots, our coats, our helmets, uh, they were all fine. Our radios operated fine in that incident. And most importantly, our self-contained breathing apparatuses, they all operated fine. The NIOSH report has made 19 recommendations, including improving training for firefighters. The Scott Deem Rescue Training Center, which is currently being constructed on the corner of Cherry and Nolan Streets, is just one of the improvements already underway. It's about 2,400 square foot home that we've built as a prop. We have furniture in it. We can add smoke, heat. We can videotape our firefighters. We put them in significant issues, challenges to where they may have a medical issue. They may be entangled. They may run low on air. They could be injured by a collapse. How do we rescue those firefighters? And Chief Hood says these changes are necessary to honor Scott Deem's life. It, it scars all of us forever, and so that's why it's so important that for even those that weren't there that night, they're affected, and for, for them, for their loved ones, for the members of this community to know that we are striving to make sure that we honor this loss of life. That was just a preliminary report. The official report will be released later. The International Association of Firefighters will honor Scott Deem this weekend during a fallen firefighter memorial in Colorado Springs. The man accused of setting the Ingram Square fire is still awaiting trial. The city council is considering regulations for scooter companies and their riders. But San Antonio has already been dealing with the scooters for the past two and a half months now. And as Garrett Berger found out, that time has given people plenty to say about them. Not everyone wants to scoot into the future. I don't know what you want to be remembered for, but I hope that it's not these dockless scooters. Hours after they heard about proposed regulations for dockless scooters, city council members heard about the issues with the roughly 2,000 already buzzing around the city. They are going to hurt somebody. They didn't know I was carrying a child with me, and they just kind of zipped past me. I said, really, I don't care as long as they stay out of the sidewalks. On the other side, David Hurd, the CEO of TechBlock and a scooter proponent, points out the scooters are currently unregulated. The ordinance, as proposed, has a lot of those concerns addressed. Like riders would have to ride in bike lanes when they're available. And though they'd have the option of riding on the sidewalk where there aren't any bike lanes, they'd still have to yield to pedestrians. The proposed regulations also include rules on where you can park your scooters, not in the plaza and not near a curb cut. And if you're parking on the sidewalk, you got to leave plenty of space. Rules meant to deal with another issue. Too many of them are left irresponsibly in pathways. I just moved two of them on my way here, walking down Commerce Street. And in any case, Heard thinks the council is ready to move forward with the proposed regulations. Let's put some basic structure in place and see how that works. I'm, I think that's how they're looking at it. And then they'll come back and tweak it if they need to. The council is expected to vote next month. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Three stories to know tonight. Forecasters say Hurricane Florence has weakened slightly. Just became a Category 2 hurricane a few minutes ago. But this remains a potentially catastrophic storm as it continues toward the Carolinas. The storm expected to bring life-threatening storm surges and rainfall as it heads towards the East Coast. The FDA is taking actions against what they're calling an e-cigarette epidemic among children and teenagers. They issued 131 fines to stores who sell products to minors under the age of 18. The head of the FDA saying the increase in the use of e-cigarettes among youth and the resulting path to addiction must end. The agency also requesting that Juul and four other manufacturers provide plans to reduce sales to teens. Pope Francis calling for a meeting to discuss the sex abuse scandal that has rocked the Catholic Church. In February, the Pope will gather church leaders from around the world to discuss how to prevent sexual abuse by priests and protect children in the church. The meeting comes amid growing criticism over the Pope's handling of sex abuse cases dating back decades. Here's a look at what's still ahead on the night beat. Coming up next, what a new report shows about cancer cases in America. We'll be right back. Thursday on GMSA, it's important to improve your child's language skills for school success. Tomorrow, find out how your whole family can help build your toddler's vocabulary. So is that system brewing in the Gulf going to bring us more heavy rain this weekend? Find out 430 to 7 on Good Morning San Antonio. I have a lifetime warranty. I have lifetime roadside assistance, too. 
World Car Kia is the place. Lease a beautiful 2018 Kia Optima LX for only $199 a month. Or lease a 2019 Kia Sorento LX for $265 a month. I found the process smooth and hassle-free. I found the car I wanted and got easy financing, just like that. I feel good knowing I have a lifetime warranty. Shop online or visit any of the World Car Kia stores in San Antonio or New Braunfels. World Car, for a lifetime. Meet Gina Ortiz Jones. Here's her home in Washington, D.C., just blocks from where Nancy Pelosi funnels money to Jones' campaign. Down the street, Jones collects cash from Washington special interests, putting their agenda before Texas. And here's Washington National Airport, where Gina Ortiz Jones catches a plane for a quick visit to Texas to pander for your vote. Gina Ortiz Jones. She's Washington's candidate, not ours. NRCC is responsible for the content of this advertising. The 2018 Subaru Outback. It comes with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive plus 32 miles per gallon. And the Subaru Outback retains its value better than any other vehicle in its class for 2018, according to ALG. This may be our most adventurous Outback yet. Maintain the love of your new Subaru with two years of complimentary maintenance. Get 0% APR financing on the 2018 Subaru Outback, now through October 1st. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather, streaming free on KSAT TV. It is a sad statistic, but researchers estimate there have been more than 18 million new cases of cancer this year. That's according to a report from the World Health Organization, and the year isn't over yet. There have already been more than 9 million deaths related to the disease. Lung cancer, the most common cancer among men. For women, breast cancer, the most commonly diagnosed. Researchers say cancer will be the number one killer globally by the end of this century. An executive order that would punish foreign entities for interfering in U.S. elections signed by President Donald Trump today. The order lays out automatic sanctions against Russian or other foreign actors if the intelligence community determines there were attempts to meddle with the vote. The executive branch, including President Trump, will have the final say in whether sanctions will be applied in cases of interference. Head south to North Park Toyota of San Antonio. The hottest deals are on the south side at North Park Toyota of San Antonio. During Star Furniture and Mattresses Free For All, receive a free Bluetooth speaker with a test rest. Plus, save 20% off select mattress brands like Beauty Rest and Serta. Plus, get your choice of a free Yeti cooler, free 4K TV, or free Apple Watch at Star. Why bother mastering something? Why test a hybrid engine for over 6 million miles? Why hand tune an audio system? Why include the most advanced active safety system in its class, standard? Because when you want to create an entirely new feeling, the difference between excellence and mastery is all the difference in the world. Introducing the all-new Lexus ES. Every curve, every innovation, every feeling. A product of mastery. See North Park Lexus of San Antonio and North Park Lexus at Dominion. These are the faces of the more than 300,000 people in this part of Texas who could lose their health care coverage because they have a pre-existing condition or will no longer be able to afford their premium. All because Will Hurd put politics before us when he voted eight times to repeal the Affordable Care Act. I'm Gina Ortiz Jones. I approve this message and I will never put politics before you. You can't wish your fat away, but you can sculpt it away without surgery and with the most advanced technology that permanently destroys fat. I did it. You can too. Go see the body shaping experts I trust at Sculptway. Learn more at SculptWay.com. Need an extra $4,500 cash? Mission Mitsubishi's Cash for Junkers has you covered. Buy a new Mitsubishi today and get an extra $4,500 junker bonus cash. That's $4,500 extra for the down payment, negative equity. Or keep the cash, trade or no trade, running or not. Buy a new Mitsubishi, get $4,500 junker bonus cash. While you're here, test drive the all-new Eclipse Cross. Mission Mitsubishi on San Pedro, just outside of Loop 410. America's number one Mitsubishi dealer. I'll take a live picture now from 281 and Hildebrand. This is the scene of the accident. You can see that it looks as if the cleanup crews 
have left. What we are hoping this means is that the southbound lanes of 281 will be reopened momentarily. You can see from this shot, the northbound lanes are open and moving, but the southbound lanes have not been reopened yet. But again, as we showed you with the Hildebrand camera, there were no more cleanup crews there. This is actually 281 uh, looking towards the Jones Maltzberger exit where you can see they are asking people to actually get off of 281. So we're going to continue to monitor the situation. The northbound lanes were opened, you know, a couple of hours ago. It's the southbound lanes that we are still waiting on 281 to be opened, and we're hoping that that will happen momentarily. We'll keep an eye on it. Meantime tonight, Sea Life and Legos coming together. Today we got a sneak peek at a new attraction coming to River Center Mall. It's called Sea Life Aquarium and Legoland Discovery Center. It's being called the ultimate indoor playground attraction with a 4D theater, birthday party rooms, and more. Everything here at Legoland Discovery Center is built in the eyes of a child. So we focus on ages 3 to 12. We like for them to experience their creativity and their imagination. The attractions are expected to open early next year. It was a shocking find in Puerto Rico, 20,000 pallets of bottled water, unused and lying on an airport runway. FEMA brought in that water among emergency supplies in the aftermath of Hurricane Maria, but the water has remained relatively untouched. It's unclear why that's the case, but critics say the discovery is another example of the U.S. government's poor response to Maria's devastation on that island. The head of Puerto Rico's General Services Administration says the water will likely be returned. The people along the coast in North Carolina are preparing for what could be a direct hit from Hurricane Florence. Evacuations in place and officials are warning people to get out. WSLS's Shane Dwyer from our sister station in Roanoke, Virginia, is in Wilmington, North Carolina tonight, where some residents are just choosing to ride out the storm. Ooh, Ooh, dolphin. dolphin. Did you see the dolphins? Barack Artem and his wife are soaking up every last drop of the calm while they can. This is their personal paradise, a house along the bay in Wrightsville Beach with quite the story to tell. It survived Hazel in 1954. Uh, it survived Fran, uh, Bertha, and several others that made town. On the other side of the island, you can hardly tell the next test. Florence is barreling down on it, save for the news crews all over the beach. Ken Newton lives inland, but brought his dog Big Kahuna to the waves one last time before they shelter in place. We've got uh, supplies for a week, and I've got sod set up in the um, garage for him in case he needs to go to the restroom, and uh, we're just going to ride it out. It's not our first one, but it's by far the largest. Police locked down the bridge in Wrightsville Beach at 8 Wednesday night with mandatory evacuations. Inland, the evacuations are voluntary. Ken, Big Kahuna, and some others are sticking it out. I'm a retired paramedic. I've been through several. Um, I've been through Floyd, Bertha, Fran, and half a dozen other smaller ones come through here, for sure. See, but this is something completely different. The Artems are taking photos in case their paradise ends up completely different as well. But they've boarded up and done everything they can. Uh, I hope to think the house is built good enough, but it's also an old house. Uh, but it's just, uh, we are, there's nothing we can do other than hope and that it will survive another hurricane. And as the last cars head off the island into the sunset, they're hoping for exactly the same. If that was Shane Dwyer from WSLS reporting. In the meantime, neighbors are trying to find ways to help out the homeless population in Charlotte, North Carolina, as Hurricane Florence moves closer to the East Coast. They're right now activists beginning to gather supplies. They're requesting things like canned goods, ponchos, and tarps to cover up tents in case there isn't enough shelter space. Even if it just rains, it's our duty as neighbors, if we have homes or not, to take care of each other. There's a guy out here with a five-year-old son, and he can't get into the shelter. I worry about the woman with her two kids that's out here that I've seen. Hurricane Florence is expected to make its impact on North Carolina later this week. And we're certainly thinking about what's happening on the East Coast, but also monitoring what's happening in the Gulf. And I'm not really concerned about what's happening in the Gulf right now, especially with the latest trends I've been seeing on satellite imagery over the past six hours. And better news regarding Florence, it is now category two. We right. mentioned that earlier. It has weakened a bit, a little more shear involved in the upper atmosphere that cuts off the top of the storm and reduces its uh, strength. So we're starting to see that.
That's great. Yeah. So instead of a four, it could be a two when it hits. Two, maybe a three. Yeah. But most likely a two is what it looks okay. like when it hits. And that's about 36 hours from now. Okay, let's start with a look at our beautiful evening out there. It was another doozy, another good one. Check this out. Nice sunset out there with a mixture of clouds in the sky and even some billowing clouds as well as we did have a few showers pass by. And we do have another camera that picked up a time lapse of some passing showers this evening. And I'll share that coming up next half hour. But look at this with 11 hundredths of an inch of rain in the bucket at the airport today. That makes it now the fourth wettest September on record here in San Antonio. And we're only a few hundredths away from taking third place, which I think we'll easily do within, if not tomorrow, by Friday. 88, that was our high temperature, so still below average, average being 91, the record 103, set back in 1893, another long-standing record high. We did make it to 90 degrees in a few spots, talking Hondo, Pleasanton, Del Rio, and Laredo, even Gonzales, but for the most part, we were in the mid to upper 80s, where you get a little extra sunshine, that's where the temperature boosts in the low 90s, but I think tomorrow's gonna be pretty much identical to what we had today generally speaking, of course. So dew points, low 70s. You can really feel the mugginess in the air. Air temperatures right now, well, upper 70s to lower 80s. 77 here in San Antonio and 74 now in Kerrville. We had more spotty showers today. It's just the nature of the weather pattern that we're in, and they're moving east to west with a little bit of an arcing motion. And outside right now, we really don't have all that much left over, one or two spritzes and sprinkles, and that's pretty much it across South Texas. But the wider view, this is what we're talking about when we move into the tropics. Hurricane Florence, it has weakened, as we mentioned, and now it's maximum sustained winds of 110 miles per hour. So still a very strong hurricane, but officially it is now a category two. Max, maximum winds at about 130 miles per hour. And keep in mind that max sustained wind of 110, that's in a small part of it around a portion of the eye wall. That doesn't extend very far out from the center of the hurricane. So that's important to just remind yourself when you're looking at these big numbers in terms of the wind speeds. Now here's the latest track. By Thursday evening, about 7 p.m., just off the North Carolina shore coastline and as a Category 2. And then by tomorrow night into Friday morning, moving just on shore, stalling a bit. And so this is going to be a big rainmaker. Yes, parts of the coastline will get battered by the winds, but the primary impact will be flooding with this. I mean, we're talking... 20 to 30 inches of rain, maybe even some spots getting more because it's going to sit for a few days. We're watching this area of now very disheveled weather, not much to it right here, and very limited development is what we're expecting as that little pocket of activity, mainly an upper level disturbance, starts to move our way. The key with this is it doesn't really matter what uh, if it gets a designation of a tropical disturbance or not, it's just going to throw moisture our way and give us some winds. High pressure system steering it our way. Friday, we'll start to see the showers become more numerous in nature. Then as we get into Saturday, even more widespread in terms of the showers and thunderstorms. And generally speaking, I won't be surprised if we see about one to three inches across most of South Texas and maybe some isolated pockets of uh, even higher than that. So tomorrow, 70 in the morning, 86 in the afternoon, Friday, Saturday, off and on showers and some good soakers embedded. So aquifer, here you go again. <laughs> We're yeah. not done yet. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, Adam. Still a lot more to come on the night beat. Including a student who police say was stabbed to death by her own friend. The attack happening at a high school today. What investigators believe led to this incident. And a hard car, a hot car blamed for the death of an 18 month old girl. Could the death toll be reaching a new record? And Apple unveiling several new pieces of technology. We take a closer look coming up after sports. All right, clearly he is one of the big offensive weapons for this team. Ezekiel Elliott is one of the big offensive weapons in the entire NFL. So why is he not rushing for over 100 yards? When we come back, it's about getting more offense out of Zeke in game two for the Dallas Cowboys. And Deshaun Watson still shouldering the blame for the Texans loss coming up. Have you lost a family member or a friend in a car or truck wreck? Call the Fours right now. That's 444-4444. There's only one number to remember. Four. I'm Ted Cruz, and I approve this message. Does Beto O'Rourke think refusing to stand for the national anthem is disrespectful? No, I don't think it's disrespectful. And I can think of nothing more American 
than to peacefully stand up or take a knee. Texan Tim Lee stepped on a landmine in Vietnam. I gave two legs to this country. I'm not able to stand, but I sure expect you to stand for me when that national anthem is being played. In November, where will you stand? Don't miss Ashley Home Store's Fall Home 12-Hour Sale. This Friday from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., save 20% off your first item and then 15% of the rest of your purchase. Or get no interest until 2023. This Friday only at all four San Antonio Ashley Home Stores. See the elephants, tigers, dogs, aerial axe, and world record holder human cannonball at the Shrine Circus. Enjoy the magnificent elephants while you still can and make memories for a lifetime. Bring the family one and all to the Shrine Circus. Come see the elephants at the Shrine Circus this weekend at Joe Freeman Coliseum. Come to the circus, the biggest show in town. Ready for office furniture? Desk Galore has new and used desks, chairs, file cabinets, bookcases, and much more. We have a big selection in our 35,000 square foot warehouse showroom. We're at 210 Pro Band, open Monday through Saturday, 9.30 to 5 p.m. Head south to North Park Toyota of San Antonio. Heading south means more for your money and big inventory on Tundras, Tacomas, Camrys, and Corollas. Visit us today and see what we mean. The hottest deals are on the south side at North Park Toyota of San Antonio. Don't miss Ashley Home Store's Fall Home 12-Hour Sale. This Friday from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., save 20% off your first item and then 15% of the rest of your purchase. Or get no interest until 2023. This Friday only at all four San Antonio Ashley Home Stores. So, you ditched your cable. Now, you have all your big streaming apps, but where's your local news and weather? Add the KSAT TV app for free and never miss a story. Stream newscasts live or watch when you want. If it's local, it's on KSAT TV. The Dallas Cowboys will stage their 2018 home opener where they host their NFC East rivals in New York Giants in Sunday night football. And even though the Cowboys were only able to score one touchdown against the Panthers in their season opener, they are still three and a half point favorites. So how can the Cowboys get more yards and points on the board, especially in the run game where Ezekiel Elliott was held to just 69 yards rushing? I think in the run game, we were, we were closer. Um, but like I said, uh, we did a lot of stupid stuff. We did a lot of stuff that put us back in the, in the chains. Uh, you know what I mean? Just this simple, simple stuff like, you know, not knowing our assignments and uh, letting up an easy sack. And it's kind of, you know, it's, it's tough when it's second and 17. It's a lot easier when it's second and eight, second and seven. We can't get behind, uh, behind the sticks. We got to come out. Um, we got to establish that run and uh, we got to get some momentum early. And KSA 12 Sports will be in Arlington for the game. I have all the highlights, live locker room interviews after the game and the new one-hour edition of Instant Replay Sunday night. As far as the Texans are concerned, they're looking to bounce back from their narrow 27-20 defeat by the Patriots in New England when they face the Titans in Tennessee this Sunday. Quarterback Deshaun Watson taking the blame for the loss after only going 17-34 of 34 for 176 yards. But how is he feeling today after watching film of the game? really just in the red zone. We got to capitalize in the red zone, get on the same page with the receivers. And, you know, it, uh, and, and like JJ said, you know, it's, it's, it's a team game. It's a team sport. But uh, for me as a quarterback, I want to be on the same page with the receivers all the time. And we just, you know, misconnected on some throws and it wasn't on the same page. So uh, we're going to correct that this week and, and move forward. All right, kickoff Sunday in Tennessee is set for high noon. Former Spurs player, now broadcaster Sean Elliott reacting to the fact that the end of the Big Three era with the silver and black is here. Tony Parker electing to suit up for Charlotte due to his reduced role with the Spurs. And Manu Ginobili has retired. We caught up with Sean at the Malik Rose Bowl to benefit the Salvation Army. I was heartbroken when he announced his retirement. I'll be honest, uh, you know, I love him as a player. Obviously, he was my favorite guy to watch. Uh, but I've said it a thousand times. I'm going to miss him more away from the court. I'm going to miss the road trips and the team dinners and Manu coming back on the plane and talking with us. That was stuff that I'll cherish. We lost a good man today. Former Spurs assistant coach Don Newman has passed away after a long battle with cancer. He was with the Silver and Black for two NBA title runs in 2005 and 2007 before leaving San Antonio in 2012. Don Newman leaves us at the age of 60. We have our first weather-related adjustment in high school football for Friday night. Got that for you in just a few minutes. Myron, Steve, now we're waiting to see if others may join this move to Thursday. Yeah, and they're probably waiting to see what the forecast is. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Greg. And still to come, more than a million people leaving their homes ahead of Hurricane Florence. Those last-minute preparations now underway. Up next.
The newest styles and biggest selection in stock and ready for immediate delivery. Star Furniture and Mattresses. Rush in and score huge savings on trucks and Jeeps at North Star Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Fiat. It's Ram Power Days. Get into a 2018 Ram Lone Star Crew Cab. $15,000 off and only $289 a month. And no payments for 90 days. Or get $7,000 off a 2018 Jeep Wrangler during Jeep Adventure Days. We have several to choose from at your savings destination. North Star Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Fiat. One block south of North Star Mall open Sunday. Ulysses, his sister Molly, Henry, who's seven. I want to be there with them, but more importantly, I want to anticipate the question that they're going to ask me in the years to come. When everything that mattered to us was on the line, where were you? Let's meet the pettiness, the bigotry, the anxiety that dominates so much of national life today with a courage, a strength, a big heart that could only be born of Texas. I'm Beto O'Rourke, and I approve this message. It's Nissan's Take Home a Titan Truck Month. The best time to take home big savings on our full lineup of tech-filled Titan trucks with V8 standard and best-in-class standard horsepower and torque, all backed by America's best truck warranty. Get to Nissan's Take Home a Titan Truck Month and take home big savings. Save up to $13,691 on Texas Titan or get 0% financing for 60 months on 13 models. Hurry, truck month ends soon. Some see a childhood ruled by seizures. We see how to throw epilepsy a curveball as the highest level epilepsy center in South Texas. Some see the desperate need for a new liver. We see the start to a new day. We make it possible for a father to give his son a new beginning as the only living liver donor program in South Texas. At University Health System, we don't just see what is, we see what can be. I found the process of buying a car hassle-free, actually fun. I found the perfect car at a great price. Worth Car Mazda is a place. Lease a 2018 Mazda 3 for only $169 a month or a 2018 Mazda CX-5 for $229 a month. Buy your new Mazda from World Car Mazda and be able to save this. I have a lifetime warranty. I have lifetime roadside assistance too. Shop online or stop by any of the World Car Mazda stores. World Car for a lifetime. I want to take a live look right now at 281 and you can see it is now back open in both directions after that massive 18 wheeler crash and fire that happened just before noon today. Yeah, finally, both lanes of traffic, the north and southbound lanes have been reopened to traffic. Again, that 18 wheeler lost control about 1130 this afternoon. We have covered it all day long here. You can see again from this view at 281 and Hildebrand. Again, lanes moving in both directions, but it looks like traffic coming on to 281 South there at Hildebrand may still be blocked on that access road, but Highway 281, both uh, both lanes open in the north and southbound lanes, finally, uh, after going on almost 11 hours at this point. Yeah, good news, they'll be open for the morning rush hour, that's that. for sure. Hurricane Florence closing in on the Carolinas, and time is running out to evacuate. Some scrambling to make last-minute preparations. ABC's Marcy Gonzalez is in Wilmington, North Carolina, where the weather conditions are expected to ramp up tomorrow. Good evening. We had just a little bit of rain, a tiny bit of wind here. Such a small taste of the effects that we will start feeling here tomorrow. And because this storm is slowing down, some places will feel the impacts for up to 36 hours, making the threat very serious. Packing up and preparing. A last-minute effort ahead of this massive, slow-moving and potentially devastating storm. This is not going to be a glancing blow. This is going to be, you know, a Mike Tyson punch to the Carolina coast. In the Carolinas, Virginia and now Georgia, states of emergency declared, with forecasters expecting Hurricane Florence to bring powerful winds, up to 40 inches of rain and storm surges up to 13 feet. It's going to be one of the biggest to ever hit the East Coast, one of the biggest to ever hit our country. The largest hospital in Myrtle Beach racing to evacuate patients, some taken as far as Florida. And authorities watching this nuclear power plant and 15 other reactors in three states concerned they could flood. That 
that warning taken seriously by many of the more than a million and a half residents in evacuation zones. Time to leave, now running out. Hearing everything that I heard, it was a no-brainer. It was time to get out of town. So. And we talked to some people who've decided to ride out the storm despite the dangers and the risk that millions of people could be left without power for weeks. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, Wilmington, North Carolina. Making headlines around America tonight, the executive producer of 60 Minutes says he is leaving CBS. This comes at three days after former, former chairman Les Moonves resigned following sexual misconduct charges. Jeff Fager's exit from the company comes after being accused of fostering an abusive workplace. Reports in the New Yorker alleged he groped women at parties and protected men accused of misconduct. Fager has denied those charges. New video surfacing of Harvey Weinstein. The UK's Sky News publishing a video that reportedly shows him stroking the arm and back of one of his accusers during a business meeting. Melissa Thompson says that she recorded the meeting while she was in Weinstein's office in 2011. She says a few hours later, he lured her to his room in a nearby hotel and raped her. Weinstein denies any wrongdoing. Weinstein's lawyer says the video just shows casual flirting. A Portland romance novelist behind bars charged in connection with the murder of her husband. Portland police say that 68-year-old Nancy Crampton Brophy shot her husband at the Oregon Culinary Institute where he worked. He died there at the scene. Ironically, Crampton Brophy once wrote an essay titled How to Murder Your Husband. Investigators didn't reveal a possible motive. She's expected back in court next week. An 18-month-old girl has died after being left in a car in California. ABC affiliate KGO says she is now the 46th person in the U.S. to die from heat-related issues inside a car this year. Police were called out to a home in Moraga where they made the discovery yesterday. Temperatures were in the 80s, but San Jose State University meteorologist Professor Jan Knoll says it doesn't have to be that hot. It doesn't take that long either. A day like yesterday, when it was about 80 degrees out in Moraga, the inside of the car would have been 130 or hotter. Noel says we are on pace to break the record of 49 deaths. The FBI investigating the body of a man found near an abandoned home in the small town of Carnegie, Oklahoma today. The man's body was found with multiple stab wounds. A woman was also stabbed but found alive. She was taken to a hospital. Both the FBI and the Bureau of Indian Affairs are looking into this case. No arrests have been made. Another stabbing at a Michigan high school leaves a female student dead. Police say she was stabbed by a friend who was also a teenage girl. ABC's Linda Lopez reports the incident seems to be a love triangle that turned deadly. A 17-year-old high school student from Warren, Michigan, now in police custody after stabbing a fellow student. I'm sad to announce that she was pronounced dead at approximately 9.24 a.m. this morning. The suspect was taken into custody at the scene, and the weapon, a kitchen-style steak knife, was recovered. The two girls knew each other and had been friends at Fitzgerald High School, both straight-A students. I'd like to make it clear that this was not a random act. The victim and suspect were known to each other, and this incident appears to involve a male student who is cooperating in the investigation. The male student, who was not involved in the incident, appears to have known both girls. The male, I should say, student uh, uh, knew both of these, uh, the suspect and the victim, and uh, that might have been one of the uh, reasons why this occurred. The 16-year-old victim was involved in various school activities, including the cross-country team, robotics club, and was a member of the National Honor Guard Society and student council. She was stabbed twice in the chest. A school resource officer quickly responding, a teacher also assisting, administering CPR to the victim. The school was on lockdown for a short time after the incident. Students were then sent home for the day by 10.30 in the morning, and the school is set to remain closed through Thursday. Linda Lopez, ABC News, New York. A California man shot by police after several rocks were thrown at cars in Montclair. Seven drivers say a man was in the road throwing rocks at their windshields and windows. 
soon as I was trying to go around him, he got in front of me, he ran in front of me, and threw the other rock with both hands, and shattered my windshield. He threw two rocks first on my windshield, and then I was about to uh, turn on the ramp, and then he blocked me out, so he got two more rocks on my side, win on my side window. The police were called. The suspect was shot and taken to the hospital. Officers say this was his second encounter with police in less than 24 hours. Earlier this morning, investigators say the suspect was taken to the hospital after reports of him acting strangely and swinging a stick, but he later left. In your consumer headline, this is iPhone 10s. It is the most advanced iPhone we've ever created. Apple unveiling its new smartwatch, which includes a built-in electrocardiogram feature that's telling your doctor how your heart is performing. Apple also introduced three new iPhone 10s as well. The 10s and 10s Max feature a faster processor, more storage, and longer battery life. The cheaper version, called the 10R, will come in several colors, but without all the bells and whistles. While the company has a following in the U.S., the tech giant is struggling to gain a strong foothold in the two biggest markets, China and India. Amazon is adding full-size real Christmas trees to its online catalog this holiday season. It will sell a wide selection of real trees ranging from two to seven feet tall. Amazon says the Christmas trees will be bound and shipped without water. The company estimates the trees would be sent within 10 days of being cut and cut down and should arrive and survive the trip. Last year, the nation experienced a decreased supply in trees since farmers planted less after the 2008 recession. It's unclear what the Christmas tree forecast would look like, though, for this year. That's an evergreen idea, wouldn't you say? Oh, hey -o. <laughs> yes. All right, so let's talk about our rainfall around here. This month, we've had 11.14 inches. That makes it the fourth wettest September on record. By the way, month to date, we're nearly 10 inches above average. This year, this year we've had 24.88 inches, and that's over two and a half inches above average. Hard to believe just eight, nine days ago, we were seven inches below average on year-to-date precipitation. We made up a lot of ground. The aquifer is still climbing. I think we'll add to it. We'll talk more about that coming up. Thomas J. Henry has been helping 18-wheeler accident victims for more than 25 years. Call now. Our attorneys are available 24-7, nights and weekends. If you or a loved one has been injured in an auto or truck accident, call 210-222-2288 or Google Caravan Shaw. The Labor Day deals continue at Cons Home Plus. Save up to 35% or more on appliances. Save up to $1,000 or more with furniture bonus offers. And save up to $1,900 on big screen TVs. Go to cons.com to get the low monthly payment that's right for you. Then come shop the deals that just won't stop at the Labor Day sale at Cons Home Plus. You want a better life and a better The aquifer continues to climb from the recent rainfall, up over 21 feet since Labor Day when the rain began. And now three feet above average. Mold very high. It's red hot! Time to clear the lot! With 0% for 72 months or 16,000 off MSRP, our remaining 2018 Ford F-150s are going fast. Or how about a new 2018 Escape? Now just $299 a month and you own it. Get red hot deals on a new Ford Explorer. Now available with a no lease, you own it payment of just $399 a month. Shop us first. Shop us now. Northside Ford, where we'll beat any Ford deal in Texas or give you $1,000. We'll beat it. Meet Gina Ortiz Jones. Here's her home in Washington, D.C. Just blocks from where Nancy Pelosi funnels money to Jones's campaign. Down the street, Jones collects cash from Washington special interests, putting their agenda before Texas. And here's Washington National Airport, where Gina Ortiz Jones catches a plane for a quick visit to Texas to pander for your vote. Gina Ortiz Jones. She's Washington's candidate, not ours. NRCC is responsible for the content of this advertising. The 2018 Subaru Outback. It comes with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive plus 32 miles per gallon. And the Subaru Outback retains its value better than any other vehicle in its class for 2018, according to ALG. This may be our most adventurous Outback yet. 
Maintain the love of your new Subaru with two years of complimentary maintenance. Get 0% APR financing on the 2018 Subaru Outback, now through October 1st. Everyone's talking about Kimmel. They said he's the most important host in late night. Really? They said he's late night's clearest voice. They said I was extremely well endowed. Oh, no one said that? <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel Live, weeknights on ABC. Big Tech is heading back to Washington. Privacy executives from companies like Facebook, Amazon, and Google, they'll send representatives to testify before the Senate Commerce Committee on September 26th. The major topic, user privacy and how the companies collect, use, and profit off of consumer data, as well as to determine if legislation is needed to protect that information. And Volkswagen has a new way to streamline its production process. The car company says it plans to use a 3D metal printer designed by HP to produce parts like gear knobs and tailgate lettering. The 3D printer eliminates the need to develop the tools necessary to manufacture those parts. VW says development will take two to three years. And you may not recognize her face, but there's a good chance you know her voice. Tara Strong is one of the most recognizable voice actors in the cartoon industry, including Ben 10 on the Cartoon Network. She recently talked to Cheddar about what it's like to connect to a cartoon. You know, you've never met a voice actor that goes, oh, I don't want to do that role anymore. Once you create a character, they sort of feel like yours, your character, your child. Like you created this being that has all this, you know, fandom, and you feel like very attached to that character. So it's mm -hmm. always fun to step back into shoes you played before. And that's your Cheddar Business and Tech Update. I'm Brad Smith from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Look outside with live cam tonight. Those temperatures are in the 70s. It's pretty nice. It was a nice evening out there. Yeah. You know, it's hard to believe just two days ago, we had a high temperature of 74. <laughs> wow. Yeah, 74 yeah. was the high temperature for the day. It's you. pretty awesome. Yeah, it was, it was something else. Of course, it was a very humid 74, and it wasn't the fall-like 74, but I'm not complaining yeah, about it. It wasn't 104. Picky. Yeah. Ding, yeah. ding, 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 ding. Yes, exactly. And so we're going to see uh, temperatures on the upswing a little bit. We're not looking at anything getting out of control, but I do also foresee the rain chances on the upswing as well, particularly the end of the week and on, or at the end of the work week and on into the start of the weekend. But take a look at this great time lapse that we had earlier today. Notice these clouds really building vertically. Poof, poof, getting some good height there and that helped them squeeze out a few showers as well. And you could see one rain shaft off in the distance there on the right side. 77 right now, feels like 79 when you factor in the humidity that we have in the air and an east wind at eight miles per hour. So temperatures for the most part in the 70s, yeah, we still have a few 80s, 81 in Hondo, 80 in Del Rio, but and Corpus Christi at 80 degrees. But for the most part, we're in the 70s right now, and I do think we'll fall down into the lower 70s and settle down there by sunrise tomorrow morning. And very similar conditions across the entire state. And with this shift in the weather pattern that we saw starting Labor Day, we don't have the heat high around. And in turn, we just don't have the intense triple digit heat anywhere across Texas. It's nice to see. Here's a look at the rain today splotchy showers on the radar screen. They're random where they pop up and they're widely separated. And it's just a matter of if you can get a good enough updraft within some of those billowing cumulus clouds, a wide enough base to those cumulus clouds. The wider the base, the better the updraft you can get and the more likelihood it's going to then toss down some rain because it can grow vertically enough. So just something you look at, you look for the the base to be wide enough, usually about three times wider than it is tall when they start developing. Kind of fun to look at and guess, hey, is that one gonna rain or not? I think it's fun. One of the games I like to play. Anyway, <laughs> it's, it, it, you should join me someday, Spree. You're gonna love it. <laughs> and it's a crazy game. You can even bet on it if you wanna get really crazy. All right. So we have a lot of activity in the tropics. Uh, most of it's very weak and really not a big deal, especially what we have in the eastern Atlantic now. But of course, Florence is significant. It is a Category 2 storm. It has weakened a little bit, but still max sustained winds at 110 miles per hour, gusting up to 130 just around part 
of the eye wall there. Look at the computer models now. They still take it off to the northwest, slow it down significantly tomorrow. And then by about tomorrow night, most likely making landfall, but there is a chance that it gets held up just offshore. Either way, it's going to slow down as it moves in over the Carolinas, and that's going to mean a lot of rainfall. And flooding is likely in and around the Carolinas. Here's a look at our little batch of weather we've been watching. It's very unorganized right now. It's even it's probably the most unorganized I've seen it yet, but it still is an upper level disturbance that's going to throw some energy and moisture our way. So we're not expecting much more development from it. But as this inverted trough and upper level low moves our way, we still are expecting enhanced rainfall as we get into Friday and Saturday. Is it going to rain all day? No, but I think we'll see periods of rain, kind of waves of rain coming through Friday, and especially as we get into Saturday to kickstart the weekend. Just in time for Greg Simmons to go up to UT Austin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm just looking. Yeah, yeah. I'm just looking. <laughs> oh. And then it looks like by Sunday a lingering shower or two, but overall drying out a little bit into next week, at least so far that's the way it looks. Yeah, yeah we'll see. Thanks, Ed. You got your rain gear? I did, just got it, Good. just <laughs> yeah. got it tonight. All right, but before we talk about that, we talk about one picture yeah. that has a lot of people talking. It sure does, it's the odd couple, the oddest of couples here. That is Des Bryant and Jerry Jones together again at a concert in Arlington. When we come back, more about the speculation that is produced now. The missions look to get even tonight in Tulsa coming up. If you have been hit by a car or truck driven by a reckless driver, call the Fords right now. That's 444-4444. There's only one number to remember. Four. Thursday on GMSA, it's important to improve your child's language skills for school success. Tomorrow, find out how your whole family can help build your toddler's vocabulary. So is that system brewing in the Gulf going to bring us more heavy rain this weekend? Find out 430 to 7 on Good Morning San Antonio. These are the faces of the more than 300,000 people in this part of Texas who could lose their health care coverage because they have a pre-existing condition or will no longer be able to afford their premium. All because Will Hurd put politics before us when he voted eight times to repeal the Affordable Care Act. I'm Gina Ortiz-Jones. I approve this message and I will never put politics before you. I drive a truck. I drive a sports car. I like SUVs. Find what you're looking for in a select pre-owned vehicle from World Car Nissan and be protected. I have a lifetime warranty. I have lifetime roadside assistance too. Select pre-owned vehicles with a lifetime warranty. That's just awesome. You have many choices on where to buy pre-owned, but if you'd like protection for a lifetime, shop World Car. World Car is the place. World Car for a lifetime. Spectrum's best deal days. Get Spectrum TV, internet, and voice from $29.99 a month each. Call 844-559-2999. Spectrum TV with free HD, thousands of free on-demand titles, and access to the free Spectrum TV app to watch live TV at home or on the go. Spectrum TV from $29.99 a month. Spectrum has the fastest internet starting speeds, 200 megabits per second, and enough bandwidth to keep everyone's devices connected. With no data caps, plus a free modem. But wait, there's more when you call 844-559-2999. Spectrum Voice, with unlimited nationwide calling in the U.S., Canada, Mexico, and more. With no additional taxes and fees, all with no contracts. It's Spectrum's best deal days. Get Spectrum TV, internet, and voice from $29.99 a month each. Plus, introducing Spectrum Mobile. Ask how you can save up to 40% off your current mobile bill. Call 844-559-2999. Denny's new Super Slam is just $5.99. $5.99? Are you out of your mind? Seriously? Yep. Eggs, hash browns, bacon, sausage, and buttermilk pancakes. $5.99? Are you out of your mind? We're out of our minds. Denny's new Super Slam, only $5.99. Ulysses, his sister Molly, Henry, who's seven. I want to be there with them, but more importantly, I want to anticipate the question that they're going to ask me in the years to come. When everything that mattered to us was on the line, where were you? Let's meet the pettiness, the bigotry, the anxiety that dominates so much of national life today with a courage, a strength, a big heart that can only be born of Texas. I'm Beto O'Rourke and I approve this message.
we're always trying to push our limits even higher than we can. So we're not really focused on what they can do. We're focusing on us right now. The John Jay Mustangs have opened their 2018 season undefeated of one of the city's stat leaders. Now they face Brennan in one of the big games in our big game coverage Friday night. But first. Texas Longhorns will face the USC Trojans this Saturday night in Austin after losing to USC last year, 27-24, in double overtime thriller in California. The Rose Bowl rematch from the 2005 National Championship game wasn't decided until quarterback Sam Ellinger fumbled the ball in double overtime. That said, Sam Darnold is gone for the Trojans, and Texas has a chance to make a statement Saturday night to prove us right. That's Tom Herman's motto about his team this season to accentuate they are better than last year's squad that finished 7-6. Now they have to go out and prove it as three-and-a-half-point favorites the more comfortable starting quarterback. The game has definitely slowed down, and um, last year was kind of uh, my, my first read's not there. I'm going to check my second. If it's not wide open, I'm taking off. And now I feel comfortable to stand back there and go through my full progression and um, understand and have trust up front to sit in there and deliver. Kickoff Saturday night in Austin between Texas and USC is set for 7 p.m. And KSAT 12 Sports will be there. Texas Aggies are looking to rebound for their 28 to 26 loss against the number two team in the country, the Clemson Tigers. The fact the Aggies were within seconds of tying one of the best teams in the nation on just the second game of the Jimbo Fisher era has just about every Aggie fan thrilled, but that's not the reaction from the players themselves. In fact, they are angry they did not pull off the upset, and that should serve them in the future. We angry. I mean, who, who wouldn't be angry after that? Yeah. But we, it's, it's driving us. It's going to push us to have even harder to punish every opponent we have from now on. I know we're going to fight. Yeah. We're never going to give up. And now everybody knows we're never going to give up. We're not, we're not going away. The Aggies are now 31 and a half point favorites in their Saturday night 630 kickoff against Louisiana Monroe. TSA Roadrunners face another tough non-conference test when they have to travel to Kansas State this Saturday afternoon to face the Wildcats. That's after they open their 2018 season with back-to-back -back losses to Arizona State and Baylor. But in the 37-20 loss to Baylor that at one time had the Roadrunners within seven against the Bears, signs of improvement, especially in new starting quarterback Cordell Grundy. The transfer went 18-33 for 157 yards and the touchdown pass that got the Roadrunners within seven. He settled in. He settled in. Uh, maybe uh, week one he was kind of rushing things or he kind of was had a little anxiety. But week two we uh, got on the practice field and we got some things corrected. And uh, we came out this week and we looked a lot better. He looked comfortable and uh, I'm happy about that. Kickoff on Saturday at Kansas State for the Roadrunners set for 3 p.m. Adjustments in the high school football schedule being made in anticipation of a major weather event on Friday night next. Hi, everyone. It's Mike and Fiona from SA Live. Join us weekdays at 1 as we celebrate San Antonio Live from Market Square. We've got recipes to share. We're going to take you to local restaurants, all sorts of fantastic things. Like magic, science, animals, and more. It all happens weekdays at 1 right here on KSAT 12. reviews are in. Texas residents get this low mileage lease on this Cadillac Escalade from around $7.99 per month. Visit your San Antonio Cadillac dealer today. Beto O'Rourke says there's no crisis on the border. Of course there is. And O'Rourke's part of the problem. Rolling out the red carpet for illegal immigrants. Taxpayer funded benefits. Sanctuary cities. While voting against body armor for Texas sheriffs patrolling the border. Now O'Rourke's talking about abolishing ICE. Giving free reign to Mexican drug cartels. Lawless borders. Reckless politician. That's Beto O'Rourke. Texans are as responsible for the content of this advertising. Official spokes owl for WGU. Here to celebrate why thousands of nurses choose WGU. Our degrees are CCNE accredited. Now? No. Our graduates are employed by top hospitals around the country. Now? Not yet. And the National League for Nursing named WGU a center of excellence. Now? Now. Whoa! Magnificent. Online, nonprofit, and surprisingly affordable. WGU Texas. It's a new kind of you. I found their low posted prices hassle-free. I got a great offer on my trade-in. 
World Car Nissan is the place. Get a 2018 Frontier SV Crew Truck. Save over 5000 Now just 22000 and 2018 Rogue S's. Save over 5000 Only 21000 And every new Nissan customer from World Car Nissan can say this. I have a lifetime warranty. I have lifetime roadside assistance, too. Shop online at worldcarnissan.net or stop on by. World Car for a lifetime. One of the big games that are being covered this Friday night will feature the Brenner Bears against the undefeated John J. Mustangs. The Bears are still looking for their first win of the season after dropping the season opener to Reagan 24-22. And then last week, suffered a bigger loss to Warren 33-21. Meantime, the J. Mustangs have opened their season at 2-0. It wins over Laredo Johnson 45-29 and Clark 36-28 last week. And they have one of the city's statistical leaders in running back Jalen Hastings, who leads with 432 yards rushing and seven total touchdowns. It's a very important win, but... uh. We still have to go out there and give it our all. We're going as hard as we can in practice. We're not letting our record uh, affect us. They're a really explosive team. They have a great offense. Their quarterback, Jacob Zeno. But uh, I still believe in my team. We have great athletes. We have a lot of talent. We just got to try to get our chemistry up, and then we're going to get rolling. Kick off Friday night between Brennan and Jay, set for 7.30. We have our first adjustment of the forecast for a heavy rain Friday night. The Kennedy Lions have moved their game against Pettis to tomorrow night at 7.30 in anticipation of the predicted weather event. Uh, the weather that we uh, or was being forecasted had a lot to do with it. Uh, just looking for the safety for our kids and the uh, kids from Pettis mm -hmm. uh, just made us uh, realize that, you know, uh, err on the side of caution. Okay. So that's why we moved our game. All right, Floresville is also doing the same. Their game is in Crystal City, or I should say Carrizo Springs. That's been moved to tomorrow at 7.30 as well. And you see the Missions had a shot at this. They're down 0-2. They had the lead going into the bottom of the ninth, 5-4. to four. They tied it, and they lose it on a wild pitch with the bases loaded so it's must wins coming back to san antonio and look who were together at the beyonce jay-z concert tuesday night in at and stadium none of them former cowboys wide receiver des bryant and owner jerry jones that's after the cowboys cut bryant and he has since trashed the coaching staff and some of his former teammates the odd couple have maintained a mutual respect for one another since the decision to dump des but now this photo has sparked speculation about bryant's possible return since he's still a free agent not signed with anybody else and the cowboys offense looked Horrible. So you've got you've got Beyonce and Jay Z, and you've got Jerry and Des B. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well said. <laughs> well said. Was it clear? Yeah. yeah. We'll be right back. <laughs> Consider this a warning. Have you ever talked to Britney Spears? Um. Hey, I'm down. Why I'm don't down. you use social media to reach <laughs> out? Because I would love to be a part of it. That's the thing. In all of San Antonio, there's no place like Wicked. Now if you can find me, love to the western sky. Wicked, the untold true story of the Witches of Oz, flies back to the Majestic Theater September 26th through October 14th for three weeks only. Don't miss the show the Los Angeles Times calls a phenomenon that keeps growing. Visit BroadwayInSanAntonio.com to get Wicked. It's Nissan's Take Home a Titan Truck Month. The best time to take home big savings on our full lineup of tech-filled Titan trucks with V8 standard and best-in-class standard horsepower and torque, all backed by America's best truck warranty. Get to Nissan's Take Home a Titan Truck Month and take home big savings. Save up to $13,691 on Texas Titan or get 0% financing for 60 months on 13 models. Hurry, truck month ends soon. Even Democrats don't trust Gina Ortiz-Jones, because when it comes to our local economy, here is what her fellow Democrat had to say about her support of BRAC that will close vital military bases. When I heard Gina say yes, she would support a third round of BRAC, I was really surprised, because it, it is unimaginable to me that anybody who wants to represent this district would ever be for BRAC. It's like playing Russian roulette with people's jobs. Gina Ortiz Jones and her plan will hurt our local communities and put our national security at risk. Will Hurd has served alongside our brave men and women overseas and here at home. He will never gamble with the jobs of our nation's heroes or our children's safety. Will Hurd works every day to strengthen our economy and keep these vital military bases open. 
I'm Will Hurd, and I approve this message. All right, don't worry. I'm not going to let you fall. I'll be right here. <laughs> She's gone from four wheels to two. Every day, there's a reason to celebrate at Peter Piper Pizza. It's fun and games where everyone wins. And me from Scratch Pizza, everyone loves. This is family fun made easy. Double the delicious with our double up deal. Get two large one topping pizzas on dough made fresh daily for $19.99. Only at Peter Piper Pizza. Peter Piper Pizza. Pizza made fresh, families made happy. Check this out. George the cat is braving the water to shed a few pounds. His owner says that George likes to sneak food when he gets a chance and weighs in at over 17 pounds. He's now putting in the work to shed that weight with the help of an underwater treadmill. Doctors in <laughs> Iowa say that if he continues those six minute workouts three times a week for five to six months, George should be able to lose about a third of his body weight. It's like a kitty gym. <laughs> is that what that is? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. What does it cost to, to do this? Put them on a leash. Take them outside, I guess. Oh, maybe just a regular walk? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm just throwing it out there. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Have a great night. GMSA at 4.30 in the morning.